In this video, we're gonna get started on overhauling the carburetors. This is an HS4 uh, 1.5 inch. So as you can see, I've got a couple of um, carburetors here and we'll start overhauling one of them. We may need to combine them both um, to build one complete unit, but we'll see how we go. All right, first thing I need to do is open up this air cleaner box and the little arrow on here so I'm guessing I need to sort of lever it up there we go all right let's check what's inside nothing's moving uh, a lot of um spider webs and stuff in there I'm going to take that outside give that a clean up um, I'll hang on to this actual filter because I'll need to get the re correct replacement for it. Okay, so to remove the carburetor off the manifold, there are a couple of nuts. There's one here and then diagonally one over there. Um, half inch spanner to get those off. Okay, so this piece will need to be um, cleaned up because that'll have to be reused as well. And now it's just a case of just removing the parts. Start off removing the air horn. I'll undo the main piston chamber and just, just pretty much disassemble the whole thing. All right, that was a bit of a pain to get off. Um, the issue is that you, you need to raise the horn as you take it off because if it goes here, then you've got no room to turn the the nut and the bolts but um i put some um, wd-40 on there that did help okay i'll set them off to the side because they'll get cleaned up okay i'll just um, undo the screw that's holding the the um choke assembly to the jet it's just so when the jet is ready to come out it can come out so i'll undo that screw and I'll just put that screw back into the jet so I don't lose it. So that can actually just pull straight out when it's ready to. Okay, uh, maybe best to undo this bolt here to get the um, float chamber off. So that's got a spring washer and a normal washer. Okay, so that float chamber should just lift off. You have this piece here which gets the angle, sets it at the correct angle. And then of course the jet will just slide out of there. And just be careful of that end, you don't bump it to expose it. And I'll disassemble this. Okay, well, I'll just disassemble this first. Now, whenever I rebuild carburetors, I usually just replace the jet, but I'll check it and see but it's probably going to need replacing anyway all right there's a little um piece in there all right so next up i need to use just a flathead screwdriver to remove these screws from the top It's always interesting to see what it's like inside these. So, uh, put that aside because that'll get cleaned. Some interesting build up down the bottom. It's just like hard chunks of, um, I'm guessing it's dried fuel and then it just um, goes off over time. All right, just put that ready to get. Cleaned. I've got an ultrasonic cleaner, so these bits will just get chucked straight in there. All right, at this point, we might actually just remove the um, the actual piston. Just be careful of that needle. I don't want to damage it. So an HS2 SU carburetor, it only has two screws on it. So this has got three, so maybe that prevents you from putting it the wrong way. Okay. 
Okay, so that's ready to come off. Just keep the spring there, and then the piston comes out. The needle is attached to the bottom of this. It's very rusted, this. Um, I won't take the needle out just yet, I'll do that in a moment. Okay, so now the next thing to remove are the mechanism for the choke and then the butterfly valve. So just undoing these two, we'll remove it. I can also remove that as well. Okay, so on the accelerator or throttle piece, there are a couple of little tabs you need to just push down. You don't have to belt them with a hammer. Okay, so the nut comes off. You then have that locking tab, which is stuck to this piece. There's also a washer here too. All right, before I undo this, there's just two screws there to get to undo all that assembly. Um, I'll finish removing this choke assembly. Be careful, there is a spring behind it and it is under tension. There's also a spring in this unit too. So there's three pieces here, you have this bottom nut spring, then you also have another locking nut up the top here. All right, that was um, pretty tight. I had to use the socket to get that off. So undo that. And then this piece should just come out and So just for reference, there's a little hole at the bottom of that valve. And then we should just be able to slide this out. All right. Um, got an idle adjustment screw that can just come out. Okay, this piece here may come off too, but I might just leave it until I clean it before I undo that one. All right, so I think it's time to start cleaning these. Okay, so I have finished um, cleaning everything up. Now I use the ultrasonic cleaner and it's, everything sort of come up quite well. So we're gonna make a start on putting this um, back together. Uh, one thing you want to do is just um, blow some compressed air through it because even though it's been cleaned up with um, degreaser then parts cleaner there still might be a few bits of debris in there um, this one isn't perfect but um, for the purpose of this demonstration because um, i do have two of them both of them are going to get rebuilt and then i'll work out which one is the better one of the two okay so the way this goes the brass fitting goes in then that goes on that screws into the body then the spring goes on and then that piece goes on there so you can insert it that way or I'll just put that piece in first screw this into the main body that will need to be tightened down
Okay, then we can insert the spring and then this bottom nut. What that does, that'll adjust the height that the end of the jet sticks through. So as that winds in, it'll adjust the base for where that sits. So we'll just put it like that for now. And of course it's gonna be adjusted again once the jet goes on. What I've decided to do, I've got the shaft and the actual piece off the other carburetor. Uh, because this shaft is pretty worn, um, it's better off just to get a, a whole new shaft. Um, these brass fittings in here can actually be replaced, but they're a bit of a pain. But for the purpose of this, we just want to get it working because we can always um, rebuild things a bit later on. But so this um, shaft is a much tighter fit where that one just um, rattles around a, a fair bit. Right, just if you jiggle the shaft a bit, um, the actual disc will sit uh, in the closed position where, where it should be, so it's nice and sealed. All right, let's get these screws back in. Okay, and then the backs of the screws, they have a split in it. And you just need to open that up to prevent the screw, if it comes loose, from coming out. Okay, next we need to get the mechanism for the choke installed. Um, the easiest way to do that, so this spring, the, the part with the 90 degree angle on it sort of sits in against that post there. And then this end of the spring will actually rest on, there's a little notch, if you look very carefully just here, it sits in that spot there. Um, it's actually easier to turn the spring sort of like that and make that end sit into that notch. So just place it on like that. And then the 90 degree end, it's easy to hook and bend and put over there. All right, so this post has a brass fitting washer and then the bolt goes through it. So we'll just get this um, hand tightened on for, for now. All right. So if you look very carefully, you'll see that end of the spring is sort of, is gonna sit in that spot just right there. So we can leave it sitting there and then you need to use some sort of tool um, to hook that 90 degree end of the spring, hook it and pull it all the way onto where that little post is, uh, just like, sort of like that. Um, just press it down with a screwdriver to make sure it's seated in properly. So you can just you can see now. So the other end is up there. All right. Next, we'll put on the connections for the um, accelerator. All right. Let me just check what I've got here. Okay. So the idle adjuster. I might just screw that in first. So we've got a washer, I believe that goes on next. Then this main assembly goes on. Just make sure it's in the correct position before we slide that on because that piece there hits the bottom of the idle adjust screw. Okay, then you've got this 
washer with those little locking tabs on it. I believe that was the correct way. We'll soon find out if it doesn't work. All right, and then the nut to go on top. I still need to tighten that one too. So normally those little tabs will be bent up, but I won't just do it just yet in case I need to pull things apart. All right, might be a good opportunity to put the float chamber on. Um, ultrasonic cleaner worked well to get rid of all that gunk from inside the bottom of that. So that will fit on that side there. Just get the parts for that. Okay, so we have this little piece just goes on to here to get the float bowl at the correct angle because obviously the body doesn't sit horizontal but that float chamber needs to. should do it. All right, so the way that this goes together, this is a, a new jet, uh, we need to get that long end inserted into here. And what we need to do as well, we need to get this um, nut down here set to the correct position. So if you look inside at the moment, the top of the jet is below. top of the jet is below um, the bridge. It needs to be completely level. So wind that in, get the top of the jet completely level. This is to get the um, default setting. You can um, do it by eye or put a tool. If you, get, if you look at it directly on head on you'll sort of see if it's level or not okay all right so we need to give this um, two rotations so what I like to do is just put a dot on there so I can keep track of the spot and then we need to rotate that wind it back down two rotations That's once. Two rotations just to bring it down. That's the default setting. So now it is ready to have this end inserted in there. Just make sure the um, the hose is fully in there before you tighten it up. That little indentation is for there. And then that goes across to here. Okay, I believe I've got it incorrect, so it does go like that. 
All right, the next thing we need to do is get the um, the piston installed. All right, we wanted to try and get the piston in there and then just see how things fit together. So what will normally happen is, I couldn't actually get this needle out, it was held in there quite firmly. But there is a grub screw that needs to go back in there. So this needle is on, it's the type which is on a little bit of a spring and it is a bit loose in there. So it does, I think that makes it a lot easier to center the jet because there is room for movement. That's the whole purpose of that style. Okay, so now let's install the spring. I might just bring him out a bit. Okay, so the spring goes on first. Now this, um, the position of these bolt holes on there, it'll only fit one way. So that's the advantage of this one compared to an HS2. Um, Okay, those were the screws for the the float. All right, these are the ones I want. All right just need to get the piston damper. All right, I'll just add a bit of um, oil in there. That's what I use, um, SU damper oil. So it's the proper stuff. It's the right um, thickness and viscosity. I won't put too much in, just enough to um, make sure things are working correctly. I just need to add a little bit more because it seems to um, feels like nothing's happening. That's a bit better. So when I lift up the piston, I can feel a more resistance because of the um, damper. So that seems okay. Now it doesn't necessarily need oil on this part, but um, I'll just put a bit on there just to help things stay lubricated until the thing's up and running. All right, let's get started on this now. Um, I'll just show you these the tools that I've got. So this is designed to get this um, bolt on that holds the needle valve. Um, that should actually have a washer on the end there. So I've got a replacement for there. So the washer goes on and then that gets tightened into here. And then you need to use this tool because no, no other spanner is going to be able to get in there. Okay, so the way it works, there's a little um, point on that tip there. And then when this bubble rises up, as the chamber fills with fuel, it pushes it up to block off the fuel and prevent any more flowing in. So that sits in there like that. You can test it. You can actually blow into that if you want to and then put a bit of pressure here. Right, and then the float 
sits on there like that and then this pin slides all the way through So then, yep, so when it fills up with fuel, that goes up, that pushes the pin and then prevents more fuel from entering and filling it up. If it does overflow, if that valve isn't working, um, you'll either have a hole just there, but below this cover, there's a hole and then fuel will come out of this spot here. Okay, so let's get that put on there now. Just need a gasket to go onto here. And the correct gasket are these ones here. It's always handy to keep um, a few of these as spares. Actually, we'll fit the gasket onto here first. It might make things a bit easier. All right, let's get the screws uh, back in there now. And the one with the little tag on it, we'll just put down this end here. And the number on there is AUD679. Just be careful not to damage the um, gasket. Each of these screws have got a spring washer. Except for that one, it is lost. I'll need to go and get a replacement. All right, I happened to found a whole kit of gaskets. So let's just see how we go on here. I believe that's the correct one there for there. Does it need to have one there? I don't know, I think it does. No, that'll be the correct one. Let's get the bolts back into here. Just make sure that gasket stays where it needs to. Okay. All right, so I ended up um, cleaning up this. I sandblasted it and then repainted it with high temperature engine paint. So that um, turned out all right. Get rid of, got rid of a lot of the rust from inside it too. Um, and blew, I've blown a lot of air in there just to make sure everything is clear. Okay, so we need to find some gaskets now. Uh, that's not the right one. I don't know if I've got the right one. I'll have to just go through all of these until I find the correct ones. Yep, yeah, that's looking a bit more promising. But I need two of those. There we go. So that piece goes on first, then this piece goes on next. Just need to make sure I get that the right way. 
believe it goes that way. Then we have another gasket. And then the carburetor will sit on top of that. Alright, the next thing I need to do now is just get these um, springs installed. I'll have to double check, um, play back the assembly video to make sure I get these in the right spot. But um, I believed Okay, so that should hook onto there like that. And then that end goes onto there. I'll have to double check to make sure these are in the right spot. And then for the choke, I believe there should be one from here. I'll have to do my research and just check this. And then onto that point there, I believe. But I'm not really sure if that needs to be there or not. It doesn't seem to want to play properly, but I'll check that out and just see. Okay, so there's our complete assembly so far. Alright, the last thing I wanted to try out was um, fitting this air filter cover. So there is a, a rubber gasket that goes on the bottom here. Then that sort of sits over here where the horn is. And so you've got this point here. That will go through this hole over here. And then that'll sit there like that. So the, the thing that I don't actually have are uh, the wing nut clamps. Actually, I, I do have one for the Cooper S filter, um, but I believe they are not as long as that. Yeah, the, the tube nuts for the um, Cooper S, I have these, the horns for the Cooper S, and I never got around to finding a um, air filter, um, like the original one, it's just, they're hard to get. But this one is um, too short, it doesn't actually reach down on the, to where the nut is. I may actually have a go at um, making some of those. On the actual lid, um, this hole is closer to the, that centre piece, so obviously it goes that way there. Then the two uh, wing nuts, tube nuts, will go through there and lock it down. So I'm, I may actually give it a go at building those myself. I'll just see if I can find them online. Alright, I think I'll leave it there because that's as far as I can go with it at the moment. So there's our finished product. Alright, I think I'll leave it there and thanks for watching my videos.